can use this combined sleep electroshock treatment on patients as long as 30 days. One patient he kept asleep for 65 days. Cameron retired, and his successor, Dr. Robert Claghorn, ordered a follow-up study on the patients treated with Cameron's depatterning method. It showed that it was no more beneficial in its result than the use of more conservative methods. But the follow-up study showed that 60% of those who had been depatterned still had amnesia for periods of anywhere from six months to ten years. That's quite a memory loss, isn't it? That is a memory loss. Indeed it is. It's uh, more, I think, more than desirable. In retrospect, does Dr. Cameron's experimentation and his treatment appear harsh? Uh, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. This forceful type of approach, uh, as I was describing to you, uh, it is definitely, it can be said that it's harsh. I wouldn't call it harsh. I would say it was harder on the staff than it was on the patients because these people had to be fed and they had to be cared for and they had to be uh, given sufficient fluid and food and toileted and so on and so forth. It was a, a very difficult uh, uh, thing for uh, the staff to, uh, to, uh, to follow these patients properly and see that they they did well. <laughs> well, I'm glad he was concerned for the staff, but I think it was harder on the patients. When I found out about the experimental research that, that it really was, I, I was really quite outraged. I mean, I couldn't believe it. How could anybody, I mean, I was just outraged. I was angry and I was outraged and I thought all these people who've been hurt and nobody was ever helped by any of this damn stuff and all the misery that I at least went through. And it was as though it was like a missing link. This is why I never got better. But damn it all, I, I wouldn't, I, I, I could have maybe had a different kind of life. and. That makes me angry and sad, and I don't know what, how to explain how I feel, really. I just, I'm just sure. How did you feel when you learned that Dr. Cameron's experimentation was financed by the CIA? Well, I thought, oh, I can't even use the word <laughs> that I thought, <laughs> because I thought that bastard. And he, I think it's inhuman. I don't know what kind of people could 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 cause this to be. I really don't. I feel very strongly about it. I I realize the CIA is a very important organization and they have a very important job to do. But God, it surely doesn't have to be done on people who are totally incapable of knowing what's happening or having any defense against it. And I, I, I can't imagine the mentality of people who would do this. I just can't. As for Dr. Cameron, he died in 1966 while mountain climbing. A colleague wrote of Cameron, for him the ends justified the means. And when one is dealing with the waste of human potential, it is easy to adopt this stance. Dr. Cameron seemed ideally suited for what the CIA had in mind. Humbly conditioned American has been trained to kill and then to have no memory of having killed. His brain has not only been washed, as they say, it has been dry clean. <laughs> the Manchurian Candidate, a programmed robot American assassin created by the communists. Was it possible? It was the Cold War and especially the trial of Joseph Cardinal Menzenti, who was forced to testify in a Hungarian court that he was a spy. And then later, the Korean War, with the coerced and mainly fraudulent confessions of American servicemen. My information took place on the... That would spark intense interest in intelligence circles about brainwashing. John Gittinger, former chief psychologist for the CIA. There was widespread anxiety uh, in the armed forces and in the higher government level that somebody was really developing some kinds of techniques that were being used to get people to perform in certain ways. 
and therefore there began to be quite a concerted effort to try to see if we couldn't get a better handle on just what the process of uh, brainwashing was. The CIA secretly commissioned a study of Chinese and Russian methods at the Cornell University Medical Center. A leader of that study was Dr. Lawrence Hinkle, who had been observing Soviet methods back to the Stalin purges and the Russian show trials. What were the Soviet methods of, of breaking an individual? You're detained. You're detained, however, in fact, totally detained, absolutely isolated from everyone else, with one man whose job it is to get you to write the extent to which you are a criminal. In this setting, you can get people to do most anything, do you see? Because you don't have to lay a hand on them. You can use anxiety, you can use isolation, you can keep them awake. And by the time you get through and you go up before the judge, the fellow says, were you a spy? He says, yes, I was a spy. Well, the purpose of the Cornell study was to find out about communist brainwashing techniques. CIA documents indicate that the agency was interested in developing mind control methods of its own. Another CIA-sponsored study at Cornell was designed to test ways to control nationalist Chinese living in this country. What were you looking for? What did you find? All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that. Our friends in the Central Intelligence Agency were interested in having uh, uh, some Chinese national tested with these tests while at the same time examined by a group of psychiatrists and sociologists and psychologists. Well, the agency's perception of the work you were doing in CIA documents uh, we have examined yeah. it says that the, the the project that was being done here uh, they intended to use everything learned about the new agents to induce them to quote to perform acts of a complex purposeful nature yeah, but that was the never effects done. of which may be out of keeping with the individual that sort of behavior. thing was never done those people were not uh, that that was when they first came here the first people they sent up to see us you see were, uh, were operational type people from the CIA with some other, other wild ideas. Our documents clearly show that the CIA was attempting to develop agents over whom they had as much control as possible. Agents who would perform tasks contrary to their own good. We were lost on the patrol. Can you recall what happened to them? Yes, sir. It was a very clear action for a night action is a Manchurian candidate, controlled by others, to do things against his will, possible. It was a remarkable film, because as far as I'm concerned, it made something totally impossible seem absolutely credible. Uh, that sort of thing uh, always struck me as a more science fiction than fact. I would say the answer is yes, but there are many qualifications to that. Dr. Milton Klein, a psychologist, a clinical and experimental hypnotist, and unpaid consultant to the CIA. The qualifications would be the subject selected to produce the kind of behavior that you wish, the amount of time, the procedures that are utilized, and the motivations of the people who are designing, executing, and administering the procedures. You're asking whether an individual can be, under hypnosis, influenced, coerced, persuaded, shaped to perform an antisocial act or a destructive act or an act of violence. My answer would be yes. Captain Marco, you be good enough to lend Raymond your pistol, please. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Ben. Sure, kid. Case reported by Dr. Paul Ryder, who was the chief psychiatrist at Copenhagen General Hospital, where a criminal hypnotist uh, being confined to a jail cell uh, found his cellmate to be a very susceptible subject. He trained this subject to eventually commit a robbery and a triple homicide, which was successfully carried off. How valuable a tool can hypnosis be in the intelligence field? 